And at 10, we've got the Injustice Joker. This one makes Liz not for differentiating from the original character of the Joker, but rather for being part of a timeline where he seriously stirred up the pot. So in this one, Joker tricks Superman into killing Lois Lane, who was pregnant with her child. Upon realizing this, Superman punches a hole in his chest, and Batman's all like, whoa, dude, murder is not cool, this is bad. This event sets forward a series of actions that leads Superman to becoming a fascist ruler over the timeline. Way to go, Joker, way to go. And at 9, we have Dual Ident of the New 52. So this one's cheating a tad since she's not really actually the Joker. She's the Joker's daughter. Sort of. So during the New 52, after the death of the family story arc, the internet got all hyped up about a character who DC was promoting as the Joker's daughter. Turns out she wasn't so much. She was just a girl who had taken up similar tactics as the Joker and started calling herself the Joker's daughter. She lived in the Gotham sewers where she finds the Joker's cut off face and wears it as a mask. Yeah. Got some issues there. In eight, we have the Ami Kami Joker. This Joker is also known as Dula Dent, but appeared in the Ami Kami series that was based on the anime inspired figures from DC Collectibles. It's a world where only females have superpowers, which includes both the heroes and the villains. Dula is the female version of the Joker in this world, and her father? Gamblin Jack the Joker Dent. And at seven, we have Tim Burton's Joker. Who doesn't love Jack Nicholson? Burton's 1989 film briefly explored the Joker's origin, giving us some backstory on a criminal named Jack Napier, who was the man responsible for killing Thomas and Martha Wayne when he and his partner robbed the family that fateful night. This backstory connection made the relationship between Bats and the Clown Prince even more nefarious. And a morbid fact for you all, when Nicholson had heard that Heath Ledger had died after playing the Joker, the actor hinted in an interview that he had warned Ledger, ambiguously stating, I told him so. And at 6 we have the Joker from the Batman animated series. Voiced by the amazing Mark Hamill, this Joker is a huge fan favorite, especially for those of you who grew up watching the series. He starts out as a gang leader that stages his first robbery at the Ace Chemical Plant, where he first encounters Batman and falls into a drainage out of chemical waste. He remains on as Batman's main nemesis throughout the whole series and its spin offs. While this one is technically the same Joker that we featured on our last list in Batman Beyond, it's arguable that his appearance in the show helps solidify the Joker as one of the most notorious fictional villains in mainstream pop culture. In at 5, we have Red Hood of Earth 23 from Batman the Brave and the Bold. On Earth 23, the man who was supposed to become the Joker didn't. Instead, he got married. But he didn't live happily ever after. When his wife and unborn child die, he becomes a vigilante who goes after that Earth's owl man, who tosses him into a vat of chemicals, disfiguring figuring him into his usual Joker appearance, smile and everything. But already having experienced immense grief, Red Hood decides to take on the Injustice Syndicate and Owlman for good, and fails, but manages to escape, eventually meeting Batman disguised as Owlman, and the two end up working together. And at 4 we have the Arkhamverse Joker. So yes, this one isn't really an alternate, but a lot of you guys want to see him on this part 2 list, so I had to include him. Another Joker voiced by Mark Hamill, and Troy Baker in the Origins game, this Joker gets real intense. For those unfamiliar, the first game, Arkham Asylum, starts off with the Joker taking over the asylum and kidnapping Commissioner Gordon. Later on, he injects himself with some Titan, which is scary as f And no spoilers, but the ending of Arkham City is, well, it gave me chills. <laughs> Have you guys played the Arkham games? Which one is your favorite? In at 3 is the Batman Judge Dread Joker. In this one, the Joker is a member of the Dark Judges, who he helped free in exchange for immortality. Not a bad deal, right? Nah. His spirit was merged into a corpse which is why he looks like this. He became Judge Joker, who could kill people with his laugh, causing their heads to explode. Yikes. And at 2 we have Speeding Bullets Joker. A Lex Luthor Joker? Yeah, that's as aesthetically appealing as you'd imagine him to be. So this 1993 Elseworlds comic features Kal-El being raised by Thomas and Martha Wayne, and he's named Bruce. His opponent? Lex Luthor, except a version of Lex who is the victim of a chemical accident that drives him insane. You can make the, uh, make the correlation there. And at our number one spot, the future's end Joker. Let's finish off this list with a super bad version of the Joker. Here we have a character who's part android, with the Joker's head attached to the body, and Batman's head attached to the back of his head. Created by Frankenstein for the brother eyes, this one is known as the Bat Joker and also the Joker Borg. His purpose? To attack and kill Terry McGinnis and forever preserve the existence of the end future, an alternate future for the Earth Zero timeline. Cyborg assassins for the win. Starting us off in at number 10, Hyena. What's scarier than the Joker? Well, how about a Joker combined with a homicidal beast of a villain known for his gruesome behavior? Enter Hyena from the Amalgam Universe, an alternate Earth that combines both Marvel and DC characters, merging them into one another. Hyena is the amalgamation of the Joker and Sabretooth from Marvel, with their stories being a very much intertwined origin story. He fell into some acid. And he's the greatest foe of Darkplot, the amalgamation of Batman and Wolverine, if that wasn't already a given. Hyena's real name is Creed Quinn, and along with Logan Wayne, he was a subject chosen to be part of the Weapon X program. Compared to Logan, though, Creed fully dived into the idea of being a living weapon, embracing it, and becoming a remorseless and psychopathic killer obsessed with murdering Darkclaw. Up next, number 9, Batman Bloodstorm. 
Bloodstorm is an Elseworlds title that's actually a sequel to Batman and Dracula Red Rain. As you can imagine, is a story where vampires are very much involved. Taking place on Earth-43, Bloodstorm sees the Joker become the leader of a group of vampires after said group's original leader, Dracula, was killed off in the previous story. With this newfound gang, the Joker manages to take control of all the major crime families in Gotham, prompting the vampire Batman and the werecat Selina Kyle to go after him. Unfortunately, Selina dies in the conflict, so Batman loses his and then gives into his bloodlust, drinking from the Joker. He doesn't turn the Joker into a vampire, though. Instead, he kills him. And because of it, Batman is tormented by the knowledge that the Joker won, driving him to finally kill. Speaking of killing, that brings us to our number eight, Earth 2's Joker. Earth 2 is the reality in which all of DC's Golden Age heroes were retroactively allocated after Crisis on Infinite Earths. As such, the Joker of this reality has aged quite a bit, and it's implied that he is the one who killed Bruce Wayne in this reality. If this is true, this is the only known Joker to have actually murdered Bruce Wayne, and that's pretty terrifying. While his battle against Batman continues by fighting off his successors, post-52, this Joker is depicted as a frail old man, wheelchair-bound thanks to a lifetime of exposure to deadly chemicals. And ironically enough, he's unable to laugh without physically hurting himself. Talk about justice. And at number seven, we have Earth-9 Joker. A tangent comics imprint, the Earth-9 Joker is part of a more realistic world that has been greatly affected by the presence of superheroes. The Joker in this one is actually a female hero who uses comical tactics to mock her enemies, especially Superman, who once again is an evil tyrant in this alternate universe. And it's not just one female hero, there's actually three of them who take up the persona of the Joker, and they all take turns wearing the costume. One of them is eventually captured and tortured by Superman, and ends up revealing the other three Joker's identities. In F5, we have the Batman 2 face. Joker. The 1998 Batman Two Faces is a badified version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Taking place in the Victorian era, Bruce Wayne is hunting down a serial killer named the Joker, whose MO is preying on prostitutes. So he's basically Jack the Ripper, except he carves smiles into his victims' faces. And like the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, turns out it's Bats who's the serial killer. He drinks a potion that gives him superhuman strength and also creates the Joker's alter ego, which as you can imagine, really upsets him. So much so that he jumps off a building. And at four we have Digital Justice. This one's pretty cool guys. Created by Pepe Morano in 1990, Digital Justice is set in a futuristic Gotham in the 21st century that's operated by technology, which takes place long after the original Batman has died. James Gordon's grandson of the same name is a detective at the GCPD at the time, and takes up the cape and cowl as Batman in order to rid the city of a sentient computer virus that was crafted by the Joker before he died. Joker virus? Pretty neat, but probably wouldn't want to know what it could do to your laptop. Probably terrible things. Up next, number two, The Dark Knight Returns Joker from Earth-31. When we were first introduced to the Joker of Earth-31, the designated Earth for Frank Miller's Dark Knight series, it was after 10 years of being locked up inside of Arkham Asylum in a near catatonic stupor. During the story, news comes out that the Joker's conscious mind is resurfaced thanks to the care of the doctors at the facility. He claims that he is a victim of Batman's own psychosis, but turns out he's not actually cured. He's just manipulated the staff as part of a plan to get out. And at a public reveal for his recovery on a talk show, he ends up murdering all of the guests on live television and then takes hostages to a local carnival. It's an incredibly chilling scene to play out in the panels. Batman then tracks him down and they fight in the Hall of Mirrors and eventually into Gotham sewers, where Batman paralyzes the Joker. But then the Joker gets the last laugh. He twists his own neck far enough to kill himself, framing Batman for his murder. Yikes. And finally, in at number one, The Dark Knight Strikes Again Joker from Earth-31. While The Dark Knight Strikes Again pales in comparison to its predecessor, it's still an impactful Batman tale from Frank Miller. Now, this version of the Joker isn't the Joker that we saw previously in our last number. Rather, it's an individual posing as a new Joker. And that individual is Dick Grayson. Yeah, some steep implications there. Released in 2001 with much more questionable art than the original, The Dark Knight Strikes Again depicts a Joker with supernatural powers and a healing factor. He kills numerous superheroes under orders of Lex Luthor, who now runs a dictatorial regime. Many of the superheroes can't believe their eyes, but they insist that this isn't the same Joker from years and years ago. And they're right, it's Dick Grayson, who Batman had fired and abandoned in the past. And now Dick specifically targets Batman's new partner, Carrie Kelly, out of jealousy. His disguise as the Joker was a way to emotionally taunt Batman before fully taking his revenge. Not only does Grayson's first of the Joker really hit home for Bruce, but on the panels, he's terrifying to look at too. Whether or not that's a product of Miller's sloppy artwork in this graphic novel is, well, your call to make. 
Still scary. In at number 10, Planetary slash Batman, Night on Earth. In this crossover between Planetary and Batman, the Planetary team travels to Gotham in a one shot that takes place outside of both of their continuities. And the team ends up meeting different Batman from different universes in the process. During the story, we meet an agent for Planetary named Jasper, who works under Richard Grayson. He's not exactly evil, just kind of weird, and gets really giggly when he's nervous and hugs himself when he sees pictures of homicides. So, Technically good, but strange. And at number nine is Martha Wayne's Joker. From the Flashpoint universe, we have Martha Wayne versus Mother as the Joker. Initially evil after witnessing her son being shot down instead of her and her husband, Thomas, Martha goes insane. Thomas, on the flip side, becomes Batman. Eventually, the two end up working together, and Martha turns a more positive cheek. But once they realize that the results of their actions will result in timelines being changed and their son becoming Batman instead, well, she kills herself. And at number eight is the Brave and the Bold 191. In an instance in which Batman and the Joker work together, this version of the Joker from the 1982 Brave and the Bold run features the Joker we all know and love working for his nemesis to clear his name of murder. Sounds a little silly, but hey, when has the Joker ever not denied one of his crimes? In this story, the Penguin is killed on live TV by someone who looks like the Joker. The Joker later summons Batman to tell him he's not responsible, and that it was actually a phony Joker. They then work together to solve the mystery. Shenanigans ensue, and Batman learns that the Joker actually cared a lot for the Penguin. Turns out the Penguin framed the Joker and is still alive, so the two trick him and capture him. And the Joker is super jazzed about it all, which is kind of adorable. In at number 3, Batman White Knight. After the Joker pushes Batman too far, Bruce goes a little insane himself, and force feeds a bottle of pills to the Joker. This ends up instilling an unexpected reaction from the Joker as a result of the overdose. The Joker gets his sanity back, and begins a crusade to get the GCPD to charge Batman for assault, or he'll sue them for the complicity in Batman's abuse of prisoners. Ooh. He even reforms Harley Quinn in the process, and proposes. And finally at number 1, Jokester of Earth 3. And probably the most noble of Joker's appearances as a good guy, Jokester of Earth 3 is a man named Jackie, who was a struggling comedian at the Last Laugh Comedy Club. He witnesses the club's owner being murdered by Owlman, the evil alternate version of Batman, and this inspired him to redesign his comedy act, making Owlman the butt of all of his jokes, which then makes him a bit of a hero among citizens of Gotham, who are all oppressed by the crime syndicate and Owlman. But also puts a giant target on his back. Owlman then murders his friends and cuts Jackie's mouth open into a smile. Jackie goes insane, becomes the jokester, and dedicates his life to ruining Owlman and humiliating him. Starting off this list with a bit of fun, our number 10 spot goes to Lego Joker. Voiced by Zach Galifianakis, this Joker is a tad more sensitive than some of the other versions on this list. The whole plot of the Lego Batman movie actually starts off with Bats hurting the Joker's feelings. How? Well, he tells him he's not as important in his life as he thinks he is. And at number 9, we have Pirate Joker. We touched on his Pirate Batman. Batman counterpart on one of our top 10 alternate Batman lists, but let's take a look at Bat's foe, the Laughing Man. He's a sadistic pirate who tries to get Capitana Felina, aka Catwoman, to seduce Captain Leatherwing, aka Batman. The two eventually have a confrontation where Laughing Man kills Robin, or rather Robin Redblade, when he jumps in front of Leatherwing and takes a bullet for him. And Leatherwing then stabs the Laughing Man and nails his body to the mast of his ship. So very piratey of him. Up next at number 8, we have All-Star Joker. This one's from Frank Miller and Jim Lee's All-Star Batman and Robin, and he first appeared in issue number 8. He's introduced in a scene in a hotel room where he's having sex with a woman named Donna. After they finish, he strangles her to death, all while professing his love to her. Doesn't really seem that romantic to me. Aside from Bruce bullying the crap out of Dick Grayson the entire time through this comic, this one has also been pretty popular online by having a couple of artists transform the Joker into what's known as the Yakuza Joker. Give it a Google, people. It's pretty cool. Miller has also stated that All Star is in the same continuity as The Dark Knight Returns, which retroactively was clarified by DC, stating that all Frank Miller's Batman works are in the same continuity. Up next, number six is Oberon Sexton. Oberon Sexton was once a British novelist who wrote books on true crime, who had gotten a little too invested in true crime really. He ended up killing his wife, made the crime scene look like a gang did it, and then was murdered himself by the Joker, who then took his identity and started helping Dick Grayson, aka the Batman in Batman and Robin Volume 1 back in 2010. As Sexton, he aided Grayson in hunting down the Domino Killer, and reveals himself in Batman and Robin number 13, claiming because of the death of Bruce Wayne, his Batman as he states, he can no longer be the clown prince he once was. But psych, he's also the Domino killer. So he was sort of good, but then not really good, but still kind of evil, but was nice for a bit, and it may have been a multiple personality disorder byproduct. Ah. Moving on. And at number 5, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, Volume 1, Issue Number 145. How's that for a title? In part 4 of a story arc called The Demon Laughs, Joker, who is dying, is submerged in a Lazarus pit by Batman. He's gotta stop Ra's al Ghul's latest scheme, and the only way to do so is by saving the Joker, who is dying. Typically, when someone emerges from the Lazarus pit, they go through a brief stage of insanity, but the reverse happens to Joker, with him emerging sane. He then ends up helping Batman by informing him of where he planted a transmitter in Ra's submarine, and then helps Bats destroy it. 
along with the dangerous biological agent inside of it. Of course, Joker reverts back to his normal insane state by the end of the story. Up next, number four is Batman Europa. Batman Europa was a long time coming. It was announced in 2004 and was eventually released in 2014. Both Batman and the Joker are infected with a deadly virus called the Colossus virus and have a week to live. Bruce goes to Berlin and turns out the Joker is there too. The two start working together to figure out who's trying to kill them, partnering up on a continent wide road trip. How cute. And if that isn't cute enough for you, the first page definitely feels the fire for shippers of Batman and Joker. And at number two, we have the 1960s Joker. Played by Cesar Romero in both the series and the 1996 film, alongside Adam West Batman, this Joker is just as campy as West Batman, in a lovable way, of course. Some of his weapons include a joy buzzer, which is like a joke buzzer that you'd wear on your hand, except the Jokers would shock people and knock them out. This isn't really that funny of a joke. And a joke flower, which looked like an ordinary water spray joke flower, except this one sometimes sprayed out knockout gas. There's a theme here, I'm feeling. And fun fact, Cesar Romero refused to shave his mustache off for the role, so the makeup department would have to cover it up, and it's pretty noticeable in some close ups. And finally, in our number one spot, we have Heath Ledger's Joker from the Dark Knight 2008 film. We had to wrap up our top 10 list with this one, guys. The Joker is no easy character to portray. Looking at you, Jared Leto. And when Heath Ledger was announced to be taking on the role in Chris Nolan's follow up Batman film, a lot of people weren't really into the idea. But then they saw his performance. Holy sh. Ledger took so much of what makes the Joker a phenomenal villain and crafted a unique version of the character that kept us all on the edges of our seats. And that hospital scene, guys, need I say more? 